I wanted to get on today and talk to you guys about fear and how imprisoning fear actually is and how so many of us are walking around in a cage of fear and we don't really know it because it might not present as a fearful response like we're scared all the time some of us are some of us have been beaten down by life so many times that we're like afraid to pop our head back up because we're just going to get whack-a-mole we're going to get hit again and so we kind of stay in place and we hide and that's fear but fear can also present in other ways for example fear can present as um, anger you know we're so afraid that we're going to be rejected or that it's just not going to work for us that we have a big wall up and we present ourselves or our face to the world as an angry face so that you know you can't hurt me you're not going to get to me that's also fear fear can also present itself and this is very common um, as depression feeling really down and feeling really really stuck because we're not taking risks we are not stepping into the fullness of who it is that we are and living the life that we came here to live because I firmly believe we all had a blueprint you know we brought with us a map and we came here to do specific things but we're not doing it and as a result we feel stuck and we, we feel like we're not living to our potential and that is fear so it doesn't just have to be scary you know that's not just what fear is being afraid it's all this other stuff but the root cause is fear and there are many ways to eliminate fear which is the good news you can do all kinds of mind conditioning you can do all kinds of study you can fill the brain and the awareness with positive information and that which is true and it's important to focus on that which is true because if you want to undo a false belief if you want to undo something that is wrong in your life and that's causing you to behave a certain way or manifest a certain way the only way to dismantle the false is to bring in what is true and the truth is the light we often call God the light right we say God is love and we also say God is light and God is light and light is an energy it is a powerful energy and the good news is that God's light is a searchlight that means it's actually streaming into who it is that you are and searching for the areas of dissonance and the areas of darkness those things that are keeping you back or keeping you stuck if you allow source energy to come into your life and if you become proximate to source energy through things like meditation and prayer and all these other great high vibration things that's what allows that searchlight to get to work and start finding those areas that need to be brought into alignment but too many of us live lives of reaction right we've got kids we've got a wife or a husband we've got a job like we've got a whole bunch of bills lots of stuff going on and in the world there's a lot of stuff going on we've got politics We've got all sorts. We've got the world. We've got war. We've got fracking. Fear, fear, fear. So many things that we can be reacting to as opposed to living intentionally. And as I said, there are many ways to combat fear. But the one way, the most powerful way to eliminate fear from your life, again, is to bring in what is true. And in specific, what is true about you. The reason you're in a cage is because you don't think you can get out of it. The reason you're stuck is because you don't think you can move or shift or change your situation. You don't understand on a fundamental level who it is that you are. And so we're here to tell you today who it is that you are. Boom. I know there's people out there who need to hear this. Please share this. If you know people who need to hear this, Spirit is here right now. Cool. You might hear me. <laughs> do some stuff that's just because spirit is here right now and there are people watching that need to watch you need to understand who it is that you are because we're in this 3d reality right and it's crazy it's chaotic but we signed up for it we knew what would come with this crazy life we knew there would be joy and we knew there'd be pain we knew we'd be this collective consciousness and all together we'd be manifesting that which we experience and yeah that's hard and sometimes it's easy but we knew when we came here what we were signing up for there's no reason to lament it there's no reason to be real pissed that you've got things going on in your life that aren't working for you instead accept the fact that you came here to experience that 
and there's a lesson in it for you and that's where the energy is and, and the lesson of the pain and the lesson of the joy is sent up to the higher self the oversoul that which you truly are in fullness and the higher self integrates it into itself and and it moves more closely to source energy that's why we came here but when we did we got amnesia we got it we forgot we forgot who we were. And so now we struggle, right? 40 years in the desert, just wandering around. Where am I going? What am I doing? We don't know because we got amnesia. Now, as little babies and toddlers, we did not have amnesia. In fact, we were born into this world in fullness, man. That's why little babies are looking up to the corner of the room and they're laughing and they're talking to somebody because their pineal glands are so freshly formed and vibrate in that they're interfacing with the world of spirit. So they are in their fullness, but they are in their immaturity in terms of their physical form. But as they grow, as we grow, get into our teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, we get amnesia and we forget. And we allow all of the conditions of life to overwhelm us. And we forget who we are. Here's who you are. And I want to tell you, you have to believe it in order to change. If you, if you don't believe this, if you can't believe it, you're not going to change your circumstance. You're not going to free yourself from the fear. In the beginning, there was God. And God sought to express itself through itself by bringing forth creation, all sorts of phases of creation. We've got the archangels created in a phase. We've got the higher selves created in a phase. All the way down, all these iterations down to where we are in this phase of creation but God sought to experience itself in these phases and in these incarnations God sought to put itself into these experiences and you are one of these incarnations God put itself through the function of your body and your life and your soul into this incarnation to experience itself therefore you are God now, don't get crazy, especially all you Christians, because I know that's heresy, but Jesus himself said, you're all gods. Hello, wake up. You can do whatever you want. If you say to that mountain, jump into the sea, guess what? It's going to do it. The substance of your faith is the magic that makes you a god, and you're not living in that potential. Jesus was telling us who it is that we are, and Jesus was showing us who it is that we are. And not just Jesus. He was an avatar. He was totally clicked in and in alignment. There have been many avatars, many, Babaji, Buddha. I'm not going to go on and on. But Jesus understood that. Did that mean he wasn't human? No. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he cried out, Father, dude, I don't want to do this. Take this cup. But thy will be done. If you want me to do it, I'm going to do it. He was always moving back to alignment with his spirit. He always knew that it wasn't about the body. It wasn't about what happened to the body and the life. It was about what he was here to do and what he was here to occupy. And he got that. You were created intelligently by the creator of all things. The all that is. He didn't make you on a whim. He didn't say, oh, let me just put all this together and boop, send them on a planet, hurl them through space, and we'll see what happens. No. Nothing God does is unintentional. Everything God does is intelligent, and it is a design, and you are a design. Now, here in this iteration, in this life, you are you. But this is just a fraction of who it is that you really are because we have amnesia we have these dense bodies and like we've got all these obstructions and our work is to find our way home in life be home in these bodies and in this life but who it is that you really are are your higher selves when god created you he created your higher self and that's who you are in fullness it's the oversoul and it's the higher self that dispatched or sent aspects of itself into various incarnations just as God did when God sought to experience itself you did the same thing and your higher self the totality of who it is that you are is really proximate to source energy you got source energy you got the archangels and then there's us as our higher selves our whole selves that's who we are we are the oversoul having an experience and it's a magical experience your power is the fact that you were created in perfection. Your power is the fact that you have within you the very DNA, the substance, the stuff 
of the God that created you. And that's called your spirit. And nobody can take that away from you. Paul said, what do I care? And I paraphrase. What, do I, what are they going to do to me when he's in jail? What are they going to torture me? Okay. What are they going to do? Kill me? Okay. I am not this body. I'm my higher self. That's who I am. You can't take my spirit away from me. You can't threaten me like that. I don't care about the circumstances and the conditions and the experiences. I care about my connection to the God that created me. That's who he was and he knew it. That's who Christ was and he knew it. That's who you are and you have to know it. If you want to live a life where you manifest into your life, things that you truly want, things that will facilitate your blueprint, things that will make you happy, then you got to occupy the reality of who you are. You are not who those people said that you are. You're not. You are not who your parents said that you are or said that you should be. You are not who your abuser turned you into or tried to turn you into. You're not the people who have rejected you, the businesses that have rejected you, the doors that have been slammed in your face, communicating various messages to you. That's not who you are and it never was. And until you realize how powerful you are, you are all gods. Small g, okay, not big g, god, but you are all gods. You're magicians. Until you truly believe that. You're going to always be stuck in a cage. You're going to always be stuck in your fear. Does that mean bad things don't happen if we're fearless? Of course not. Again, this is the gig we signed up for. But it means we can move through them. We can see it for what it is. It's a lesson. It's painful. Yeah, maybe. But we move through it and we bless it and say, thank you. This is just another lesson. I'm going to use this. How can I use this? How can I occupy the totality of who it is that I am as a child of all that is. What can I use that for? I want to close by saying, if you don't believe what I'm saying to you, you won't be able to have it. You're going to leave this life and you're not going to have done what you came here to do. Dr. Wayne Dyer said, don't die with the song still in you. Don't die having not sung what you came here to sing. Don't be afraid. You are a child of all that is. And you have the power within you right now. If you had the faith of a mustard seed, just a little mustard seed, you could do whatever you wanted to do. What are they going to do to you? What are they going to do to you? They're going to hurt you. You can take it. They're going to shame you. Why? You know who you are. You can't shame me. That's like somebody telling me the sky is purple. Okay. I know what it is. You can think what you want. You have to believe in who it is that you are. There's a lot of you out there running these false beliefs about who you are. You know, if you've read the four agreements and I suggest that you do highly because it's so powerful then you already know that in order for somebody's actions or somebody's words to change us, we have to agree with them. And when we agree with them, it's as if they have cast a spell over us and changed us forever. And it was never ours. It was never true about us. It was theirs. But we integrated it and we took it in. Too many of us are walking around with other people's belief systems and acting as if they're our own. We got to get really clear that that's not ours. That never was ours. And while we may have been puppeted a little bit by that which people put into us, no more. We're stepping out of the cage. No more. We're free. There's nothing to be afraid. If God is for you, who can be against you? Who cares if they're against you? You know, a lot of people, they don't like me on the internet. Shockingly. They don't like me. They don't like my style. They don't know what I talk about. I'm a new age person who talks about Jesus and that makes them a little crazy. I don't care. I'm talking to the people who get me, who are vibing with me, who are on the same level that I'm on. I am ready to change this world, guys. I believe we can do it. I think we are in the ascension process. I think we are shifting. Our vibration is getting more and more subtle. We are going higher and higher. We are approaching the next energetic structure, which is a dimension. We're going there. Now you can either come or you don't have to, but I believe strongly that it's people like you and me that can change it all. But we have to start by losing the fear we have to start by understanding who it is that we are, magical creatures who can change the world if we want to. Do you want to? 
I want to.